whether you are alone or with your family or with your friends. Today, the title says, Rebuild it and it will come again. Rebuilding the altar. What brings God back? It is only when we rebuild the broken altar in our lives that that will bring God back to our lives. Let's pray. God our Father in heaven, as we take time to listen to your word, help us to rebuild the broken altar of our lives, the broken altar of our relationship with you. At this particular moment also, we'd like to pray for our brother, Mamel, who was with us in the morning but is not feeling well. He has gone uh, out of the church, Lord, and we pray. If there are any medication he's taking, may you have blessed him be upon, give him rest in body and mind, and Lord, may you heal him so that tomorrow he will join us together as we continue this journey of the 10 days of prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I would like us to go to the scripture. Our main text is taken from 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 30. 1 King chapter 18 verse 30 is our main text. I would like us to read it from the scripture. First Kings chapter 18 verse 30 says, Then Elijah said to all the people, Come near to me. So all the people came near to him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken. That is the key text. What is the background of this text? The background of this text, Jezebel, the Sardinian princess who was married to Ahab, has misled Ahab the king into the worship of Baal. And as such, the whole Israel wandered away from the true God, from the worship of the true God, the living God of Israel, into the worship of Baal, an idol that does not speak, has no mouth, has no brain. That was the background. And so, that day, at Mount Carmel, Mount Carmel is where Israelites saw the power of the living God, and by that, Elijah has been given a nickname, the prophet of fire. The prophet of fire. I don't know where are you in your life with your God. You know, Elijah, because Ahab has uh, misled the whole Israel through the influence of the wife, Jezebel. And so because of that, Elijah said, there will be no rain for how long? How long? Three years. Only three years? Huh? Is there no Samyogesa? Three years and a half. There will be no rain. <laughs> The atmosphere of that faithful day was church. Though at air, though at supernatural silence, had a God man coming. You know what happened? The prophet of Baal, in the night said, you come, let us see whether Baal is God or the God of our ancestors, the God of Israel. The living God who created heaven and God and earth is the living God. So, he gave first the chance to the prophet of Baal. They prayed since the morning until the evening time, the time of the evening sacrifice. Then Elijah said, Elijah mocked them, said, ah, now you rest. First of all, he said, you pray hard. Maybe your God is uh, he's sleeping. Pray hard so that he wake up from sleep. Maybe he has trouble. He was mocking them. These people cut themselves and shout and all this, and nothing happened. Because Elijah said, now, to prove that whether your God is God, 
Let your God send fire on the sacrifice. Let us sacrifice. When you are sacrificed, let God, you are God, send fire. And then they pray until his uh, own was coming to evening that God burn, did not send fire. And then Elijah, Elijah called. This is the text we read. Then Elijah said to all the people, all who gathered there, come near to me. So all the people came near to him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. It was at Mount Carmel. It was no longer working. The children of Israel stopped sacrificing to the living God, the God who created heaven and earth, and they were now worshiping Baal. In previous times, this wooden mount was lush, was lush, green, and beautiful. It received plenty of rainfall and was considered a holy place, a place of blessing and fertility, according to Prophets and Kings, page 144, written by Ellen G. White. But all that had changed, what had changed? The three years and a half of growth. No rain. That forest has become now desert. What used to be green was now burned and burned. The result of a painful three and a half years drop. You find that in First Kings chapter 17 verse 1. You find that in First Kings chapter 18 also verse 1. And then when you read in James 5 17, you will find the prayer of Elijah. That has brought a life once more to Israel when he prayed and God sent rain. First he prayed, no rain, and then he prayed, rain came. Maybe we read that one. James chapter 5. The letter of James chapter 5. The letter of James chapter 5, we read verse 17. The Bible says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. Elijah is not different from any of us. He was a human being like us. He has two legs and two hands. He has a head, mouth, teeth, and tongue. Both. He was like any of us. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. Have you one time prayed a distinct prayer that God, this is what I would like you to do. This one God, do it for me. Do it for my family, do it for my country, do it for my church. Has God answered you distinctly sometime like that? Yeah. I remember I shared with you one time I prayed, when I was sitting for my intermediate, I prayed for a specific mark that I should get that one, and I got it. Very distinctly, I prayed for it. Exactly, I was amazed. I was surprised. Hey, hey, God has listened to this prayer. Exactly what I prayed for, he has done for me. My brother, <laughs> that one, who is called God, is God. That one. If you don't know him, you better know him from today. If you doubt him, you stop doubting him from today. Believe and trust in him. Whatsoever you ask, we are told here, Elijah said, Elijah said, I have, you will know that there is God in Israel. There will be no rain. Three and a half years. Three and a half years. Only three years and a half. No rain. People ate everything they have. I think people went as far as eating even donkeys. People ask things that they should not. So Elijah was a person like us. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. Verse 18. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. And the earth produced its fruit. Hallelujah. When he prayed again, God listened. God listen. Here is how Ellen White described Israel at this time. This you find in Prophets and Kings, page 124 to 125. The earth is purged as if with fire. The scorching heat of the sun destroys what little vegetation has survived. The streams dry up, and lowing heads and bleating flocks wander hither and hither. 
in distress. Once flourishing fields have become like burning desert sands, a desolate waste. Once prosperous cities and villages have become places of mourning, hunger and thirst are telling upon men and beasts with fearful mortality, famine with all its horror comes closer and is still closer. That was the condition of the people of Israel when they have given themselves to the worship of Baal and the men of God came and now announced, announced God's judgment on the people of Israel. The drought within, perhaps greater than the physical drought that breathed the nation was the spiritual drought that left God's people soul fasting and faith depleted. Greater than the drought of the land was the drought of the soul of the people of Israel. After drifting away to the worship of Baal, not worshiping God, their soul has become dry. Israel was ruled by the evil king, Ahab, and his wife, Jezebel. Ahab's Sidonian bride had, had weakened his allegiance to God. You men, you better marry a faithful woman. If you have fallen in the hand of an unfaithful woman, you are finished. You are finished. Here, Jezebel, she was a princess. The daughter of a king of Sidonia, married by Ahab. And because she came from the background of worshipping idol, Ahab was captivated by her love into the worship of idol. And in those days, people followed their king. Whatever the king does, everybody follows. And so the whole Israel was the worship of Baal. Where are you today in your life? Equally, if you also marry an unfaithful man, your life will be in trouble. Ladies, especially you young ones, you in the choir here sitting in the congregation, if you happen to marry an unfaithful man, even the Bible says, who can find a faithful man? Do you know why? Because everybody claiming to be faithful. All men claiming what to? Faithful. And when they come with their lips, I love you. And if you just throw yourself into that love, without thinking properly and seeking God's counsel, whether this love addressed to you is really the true one, you are in trouble. You are in trouble, my sister. You are in trouble. You will fall into a situation that will shatter your life, that will distort your life, that will confuse your life, and your life will never be the same, you will live in a confusion and you will end up your life a confused lady because you cannot make proper choice. Your life has been messed up. Take care. Take care. It was into this catastrophic spiritual apostasy that God called the prophet Elijah. Of Elijah, Ellen White writes, they are dwell in the days of Ahab, a man of faith and prayer, whose fearless ministry was destined to check the rapid spread of apostasy in Israel. Who was Elijah? Who was Elijah? Not Elijah, Elijah. Who was Elijah? He was a man of faith and prayer. A fearless man. Man of faith of prayer, who is not afraid of anything? His ministry, check. Check the great apostasy that was in the land of Israel. He came boldly before Ahab and announced that Ahab, you will know that the man of God has spoken. The message from God. Three and a half years, there will be no rain. There will be no rain. And then, when he came and prayed for the rain, he said, please, King, Hitch your horse very quickly. The sky was uh, drier, but say, hitch your horse very quickly, otherwise you will be washed on the way. It did not take long. Rain fall. 
Mail phone. All his things were full. All ponds contain water. Animal drink, human being best, and they drank. And peace came back to the country. Peace came back. Elijah rebuilds the altar. After the prophets of Baal and Asherah failed to get their gods to set fire, it was at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. This you get First Kings chapter 18, verse 36. That Elijah called the people near and rebuilt the broken altar of the true God. Let's read verse 36 of chapter 18. Verse 36 of chapter 18. What does that one tell us? And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel. And I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Let's continue. Hear, O, hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that you are Lord God, and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stone, hallelujah, and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. God, the living God, sent fire from heaven. That fire did not leave anything unburned. Beginning with the wood and the stone, the sacrifice, the water, and the dust, everything was consumed. Now Elijah called the people near and rebuilt the broken altar to the true God. In a very real sense, Elijah was not just calling the nation back to the altar of true worship, rather, he was calling the nation back to the altar of regular systematic worship of the true God. I don't know how regular and systematic you are in your worship of the true God. I don't know how regular and systematic you are in your morning devotion, your evening devotion, I don't know. I don't know how regular you are in your Bible study and meditation upon the Word of God. We are called here back to this regular worship of God where we take time to meditate upon His Word and worship Him regularly having morning and evening devotion. Israel's corporate worship altar was broken. But Israel's personal and family altars had been broken long before. See what happened in Israel? My brother, this church will never be a strong church unless we individually are strong from where we came. If we are committed and devoted to God individually in our homes, this church will be strong. But we only we come to parade ourselves here. Meanwhile, when we are at home there, in the locality there, we mess up ourselves, our lives, and then we come here to parade ourselves that we are faithful, we are believers, I'm a choir member, I'm a church officer, I'm on there, and so on and so on, I'm a pastor. My brother, my sister, that will not help us. The church will not stand. It's only when we stood firm from where we are coming, then we can also be firm here. What will bring God back to our lives? It was the restoration of true heartfelt worship that moved God to respond at Carmel. When Elijah called people, come, let us rebuild the altar of the Lord. It is that that brought God back to reveal himself in fire. If your personal or family worship altar is broken, my brother, my sister, rebuild it and let the fire of God's presence consume all who gather to worship Him at your home and your dwelling place. My brothers and sisters, this is the message of the Lord for us today. Let us pray. Let us ask God to help us to rebuild 
our broken altar of continuous and systematic worshiping him. I wonder how many here today say, Lord, here I am, help me to rebuild my altar, to have a constant, systematic, devotional life communion with you. How many will say, here I am, Lord? May you stand, my brother, with your arm up, pointing to that God of fire, God of Elijah, that he sent fire to consume us. Oh God, our Father in heaven, the God of Elijah, the God of fire. Oh God, help us to rebuild the broken altar of our worship. Oh God, help us with our children so that Lord will worship you in reverence and holiness. Oh Father, help us so that we don't only come to parade ourselves, to register our attendance in worship, no. But we should be truly coming, Lord, to grace the fellowship of the unity the spirit that comes from our devotional personal life in our homes oh father help us rebuild our broken altar in jesus name i pray Amen. i have decided to follow jesus Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit continue with us both now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you.